Welcome to worship with Desert Cross Lutheran Church. We join with all the faithful followers of every age as we gather to praise the one who is the rock of our faith. God is our strong foundation that forms us into the body of Christ. Together we will weather the storms of these days and reach out in love. Go to desertcross.org for a worship bulletin and to find spiritual resources, all the ways that we are reaching out in love and for online giving. And we thank you for your gifts that enable our mission to a hurting world. May the Spirit quiet our hearts and minds as we come and worship. We gather to give thanks to you, O Lord, with all our hearts. We will sing your praises before all creation and rejoice in your steadfast love. You have created us, O Lord, and made us for yourself. In you we become everything you have made us to be. Come, let us worship. Hear this prayer of confession. Forgive us, Lord, when we are closed and locked up with negative acts, thoughts, and emotions. Help us not to be imprisoned by fear, hatred, prejudice, unforgiveness, pride, greed, anger, and selfishness, but open our hearts to the values of your kingdom. Open our eyes to see your kingdom and help us to be an active part of it. Open our ears to those who cry for help and justice. Now hear these gracious words of assurance. God is the giver of many gifts. God is the creator of the one body. God is slow to anger and quick to forgive. God helps us to share and honor the gifts of all. God helps us to heal the wounds and reunite the body. We are forgiven, loved, and accepted. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden. Her desert like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. Here ends the reading. The good news comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is just full of questions, isn't he? He asks his friends, the disciples, who do people say I am? And then he asks, but who do you say I am? It's important to understand in the first century context that it was a collectivistic culture, meaning they identified themselves and made decisions based on groups, on how other people saw them and how their decisions affected the well-being of the group. Jesus' questions are not individualistic but looking for identity in how others saw him and to determine how much influence he held. When Jesus asked his friends, who do you say that I am? Peter, ever the entrepreneur, confesses, you are the Messiah, 
the son of the living God. Then Jesus tells Simon Peter who he is relative to the group and to the future. You are Peter, which in Greek means rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. And then he gives them their mission. Jesus declares Peter's confession of faith as the rock of the future that will flower into God's church of faithful Christ followers who will share that faith, hope, and love throughout the world. Jesus helps the disciples to think about who he is to the world, and not only who he is, but who they are as his followers. Jesus wants us to identify ourselves through him, and he always considered his mission his identity. When we call Jesus the Christ, we are confessing who is our rock, our foundation. Confessing Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, is to understand who we are in relationship to Jesus as his followers. And that sends us out, that we must put ourselves aside, just as Jesus yielded to the will of God for the good of all. When we gather and take on the title Christian, we become little Christs, as Martin Luther said, who are disciples, learners who follow Jesus, followers who learn from Jesus. And we know that this all comes from God. Even our faith is a gift. Jesus told Peter he couldn't even take credit for this wonderful confession of faith because it came from his Father in heaven. The faith, hope, and love that we confess and share with the world are all gifts that come from God. And not just for us, but to share. Think back. God's people in Genesis struggled with their faith as they wandered in the desert. They constantly questioned, is God with us? For us? Does God love us still? And God remained faithful. God's people in Isaiah struggled as they were in exile, captives. They longed to return home and they questioned, is God with us? Does God love us still? And God remained faithful. God's promises of salvation came true in Jesus. The flower of our faith bloomed in Mary, died on the cross, and bloomed again on Easter morning, establishing hope of eternal life. We celebrate that hope every Sunday as a mini Easter. God's people today are struggling, struggling with faith, anxiety, depression, sickness. This time of pandemic, political savagery, and reckoning with systemic racism is more difficult a time than most of us can ever remember. And we can't even gather in the ways that we normally would to comfort each other. We wonder, how will we get through this? We need these mini Easter's every Sunday because we need to be reminded that Christ is our rock, the bedrock of our faith and our lives. And we might even need to carry our brothers and sisters' faith for them when they are in need, reminding them that God is still at work. God is still at work sustaining us and creating faith, creating in us hope, and moving us to acts of love. This reminds me of Spencer West. Spencer West identifies himself as a social activist and world change warrior. His life has been marked by both obstacles and triumph. After losing both legs from the pelvis down at the age of five, he entered a world that might have easily defeated him. 
Instead, he tackled challenge after challenge, and with the help of others along the way, he learned to navigate in a world set against those with disabilities. He created Me to We, a social enterprise enabling people to do good just through their everyday choices. If Jesus had an organization, I think Me to We would be the perfect name. Spencer has reached out beyond himself to build schools and villages in Kenya and India, and one of Spencer's biggest achievements was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. That's right. In June 2012, he summited Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, the tallest standalone mountain in the world at 20,000 feet. He couldn't do it all alone. He had the help of trainers and his two best friends. But the incredible part is that Spencer West hoisted himself up that mountain by walking on his hands about 80% of the way, and his friends carried him in a custom wheelchair in the places he couldn't walk himself. And he didn't just climb for himself in his own personal accomplishment, but he climbed to help others. He set a goal of raising $750,000 for a nonprofit called Free the Children that helps children break free from poverty. Spencer's climb raised half a million dollars, and then he continued to reach his goal through a campaign that he named Redefine Possible. In the midst of this climb, Spencer said, sometimes it was hard to go on. The challenge was so great. It was exhausting. And his friends were nearly overcome with altitude sickness as they helped him. He said it was one of the few times that he has really wished he had legs so that he could carry his friends as they had carried him. But there was another kind of help on the trail. Spencer said, along the way, there are little rock statues called cairns. Cairns are a heap of rocks that hikers pile up as a landmark on the trail. They are a symbol for when you are lost. If you see a cairn, they show you where the trail is again. That's where I first saw myself as a cairn for others. Well, those words of Spencer West really stuck with me when I read them several, several years ago. And I remembered them when my husband Brian and I went hiking in Sedona last summer. We met a couple from Long Island, New York, their first time in Arizona. They were terrified of everything sharp or pokey, asking us about snakes and scorpions and touching cacti. The husband actually pointed across the road to a far off hillside and asked me, is that a cow? No, I said, that is a cactus. <laughs> we laughed a long time about that. Anyway, after we left this couple, along the trail in our hike, just down the hill from this picture, we came across a field of cairns on a rocky path along Oak Creek. It was remarkable to see these cairns all together, and they made me think of a gathered community of faith. And Spencer West's comments came back to me about cairns on his journey. He said that seeing those cairns along the trail made him realize Maybe I'm a symbol for other people when they feel lost or when they feel like a challenge is too big and I can be that Karen to reassure them, it's okay. If I can overcome this, here's the path and you can overcome it too with help from others. Spencer West saw that the Karens that he followed served as a sign to find the way and he imagined himself using his challenges in life to help others when they were discouraged and lost. He wanted to give people hope from me to we. That is what Jesus was doing. Jesus was on a mission to share God's amazing grace, to give us hope by his loving actions of healing and preaching and teaching. He wanted to bring people to faith 
and to radical change in their lives so that together they could change the world. He called all people to follow him and told them that his path was the one to follow. In times such as these now, times of confusion and distrust, times that sometimes seem impossible, we can think back to the disciples and know that they surely felt the same way. We need to remember who we are in relation to Jesus and our ancestors in the faith. They were confused and scared many times, yet Jesus was their cairn in the journey. He was always there to keep them on the path. He was constantly redefining possible. And once he ascended to the Father and left them with the Holy Spirit, he was still with them and they became Karens for each other and for the world. As disciples of Christ, we are seeking Jesus in our lives, and we're not the only ones. So many people are seeking grace, God's unconditional love that is there for all people. So the good news is that Jesus is our Karen in life. And he is rock solid. As his followers, we can all be Karens for others who are struggling to find the right path. We can help each other find the way. The season of Pentecost, in which we are for the whole summer, helps us to think about how we can grow more and more Christ-like in our daily lives. How can we be a Karen for Jesus in a world filled with confusing paths? And where will we look for those that can be a Karen for us when we feel lost? The eternal life that Jesus promises doesn't just mean life with Jesus after death. It means life with Jesus now, right now. God continues to create faith, hope, and love in the midst of all of our questions during challenging times. I see this from Desert Cross in the cards and phone calls that have taken the place of visits, in the neighborly love of wearing a mask, in the mission that we continue with supporting the Grace Hydration Program. I help for those experiencing homelessness and school supplies for those in need. In the beginning stages of working as a community for greater racial equity and justice in our country. These are no small things and they unite us in a time of physical distancing, giving us strength to branch out from me to we. Just as Spencer West dared to climb that mountain, dare to live life with Jesus today. See how he helps you redefine possible through his amazing grace. Let us pray together in the words of Ephesians. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.
blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom for men, Jesus Messiah. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are Lord of the Sabbath and Lord of our lives. So we pray for your church to make disciples and we stand on the rock of our faith in you. You are a Lord who walks beside your people. So we pray for people who walk for justice and promote peace in our country and world. You are a Lord who raises up those who are bent low. So we pray for those held down by the grindings of life and the indifference of the world. You are a Lord who feeds the hungry, so we pray for all who long for bread and the means to provide it. You are a Lord of healing and hope, so we pray for an end to this pandemic and good health and healing for all. You are a Lord who says, follow me, so we pray for courage and faith in our hearts that we may take up the cross and follow you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
May God bless you with the heart of Christ, tender for mercy. May God bless you with the eyes of Christ to see a world in need. May God bless you with the feet of Christ to bring good news. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.